What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about invincible ledge stalling. Uh, this is actually a question I get asked a lot on my stream because I invincibly ledge stall in sort of a weird way compared to most people. Um, so if you look how I do it, I actually shine before I do the upbeat. Um, and even Mutaking, I think it was Summit 5, the first summit that I actually went to. I was playing some friendlies with him and he was like, I don't know why you're shining before you do the upbeat. That makes it so it's not invulnerable. I said, that's actually wrong, Mutu King. I, I can prove it to you that like that's actually not the case. If you do shine, you actually can get it invincibly. So I'm going to go through some of the nuances. Fox is a little bit more complicated. I'm going to go into that after we go through Falco, because I think that's nice and simple over here. So we're looking at the action states at the very top of the screen. Falco is number one if we look there. So those are the action states we're going to be paying attention to right now. So I cannot drop from the ledge until this frame right here. This is the first frame I can possibly drop from the ledge. Uh, if I press down right now, I will have successfully dropped from the ledge frame perfectly. And I want you guys to understand this is the most important, if not like almost the only important part of invincible ledge stalling with Vox and Falco. Um, so let me just show you if you don't believe me. So I'm gonna drop from the ledge here and I'm just gonna fall for, let's say eight frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll double jump here, and we jumped for three frames. So we've been off the ledge for a total of 11 frames now, right? And I'm just going to up B. And just so that you guys know, my character is blue because that is showing that I am currently intangible. I have ledge intangibility. If you look at the fox, he's yellow. You could literally just hit that guy right now. So we're going to look and see, do I have any frames of me turning from blue to yellow before I grab the ledge? I, I dropped from the ledge, and I took 11 frames before doing my up B. So we're going to go kind of slowly here, just look through, and we're blue all the way through, and we're blue and grab the ledge. So again, the only part that truly matters here, obviously, you cannot just, um, <laughs> to be very, very, very clear, I cannot just drop from the ledge for, you know, 30 frames and then come up here and then up B at, you know, this point, <laughs> and still be intangible. So it does sort of matter that you do it somewhat quickly outside of that. But what's kind of interesting is a lot of people do this method, and I'm, I'm actually not very good at it, where they curl their controller in almost like a half circle motion, and they drop with back, and then they, like, curl upwards to up B, right? Um, and for some people, that's really comfortable. But for me, what I find most consistent is a nice down-up motion. Um, which is why I end up doing the shine before I actually do the intangible ledge stall. Um, and what I just proved to you guys is that you can drop frame perfectly and still spend some time and still get the, the invulnerable ledge stall. So let's just look at this really quick. So what I might do is I might drop from the ledge and then I'll shine here for, you know, uh, let's say like five frames or something. Then we jump out, we do the up B, and then the stall should still be invulnerable. Boom, look at that. So that is just my comfort is, is doing this down up motion. I feel like it's very consistent, um, feels nice for my hands. And then, uh, you know, I, I don't have to do it immediately, um, which this curl method, there's no real way to like, like slow down the curl. Uh, so I'm so sorry, I'm so bad at it. I never practiced it, there it was. Um, now to get a little bit more specific, we're getting into a little bit more nuance here, Falco, is already, he is required to double jump to grab the ledge. Let me show this really quickly to you guys. So I'm gonna drop from the ledge frame perfectly. And then I will, I only drop it back so I'm not fast falling. And then I will up B, next possible frame. But if we look here, I actually cannot grab the ledge by doing so. I just shoot right past it, right? I can't grab it. I am required to double jump. So since I'm required to double jump, if I do the shine first, well, I have to double jump out of the shine, so I'm going to be grabbing the ledge. Um, now, uh, let me go ahead and show you guys uh, Fox. What I'm actually going to do, just to get the camera over here real quick, is uh, move this person over here. Ba -ba -ba. Now we are controlling Fox. So Fox, on the other hand, um, a lot of the same things apply, okay? Dropping from the ledge frame perfectly is still the most important part of ledge stalling. And if you... Um, uh, actually, something that I should kind of make sure that you guys understand is that, watch this. So, I, so Fox does not have to double jump. So I can just drop from ledge, next frame, up B. I'm going to show that real quick. But I stayed on the ledge for one extra frame. Drop from ledge, 
up B, right? I just dropped from ledge up B one frame to one frame. So this is frame perfect outside of dropping from the ledge frame perfectly. Let's see if we see any yellow frames that might pop up here. Okay, we're looking nice and close. And there is a yellow frame. I'm actually vulnerable. So if you don't drop from the ledge frame perfectly, you cannot get an invulnerable ledge stall. It is impossible. You cannot do it. It is required of you for Fox and Falco to drop from the ledge frame perfectly, to be very clear. Uh, now, again, I didn't double jump with Fox here. I still grabbed the ledge, which is one of the interesting things that I wanted to point out, kind of the difference between Fox and Falco, um, which, again, is maybe why this curl method could be a little bit better for Fox, because it, it's that's sort of the easy way to get drop from ledge into immediate up B without burning your double jump. And this is kind of interesting, because if you are slow, then, uh, you know, you could get hit out of it. But if you get hit out of your up B stall, and you still haven't used your double jump, then you actually save that double jump and you can still use it to recover. Which is one of the reasons why um, ledge stalling with Fox might be a little bit better because you can save your double jump. Uh, but this is me just dropping from the ledge frame perfectly, not double jumping here, and we got a perfectly invulnerable ledge stall. Um, now the same thing applies for Fox here, where uh, he can drop for a very long period of time, jump back up, and still be completely invulnerable as long as he has dropped from the ledge frame perfectly. But one of the really interesting things is that Falco does not have hitboxes on his up B, but Fox does. Now, I'm not going to get too far into the specifics about this, but the way you would need to do your up B stall in order for your up B hitboxes not to appear as Fox, look, I'll actually, I'll do an example for you guys really quickly. So if I drop from ledge here, right, and then I double jump back up, and then I up B. If we look very closely here, this big red bubble is going to appear around the blue fox, um, which means that there is a hitbox active. Now this is a problem. Let's say that you're trying to invincible ledge stall around Marth that's gonna be up being into you, and then he gets hit by the hitbox, and then he's able to up B again or something like that. That might ruin your edge guard. You're trying to invincibly ledge stall so that he passes right through you, but instead he collides with the hitbox. That might be a problem. Um, there are some other reasons why this is kind of detrimental as well. Let's say somebody walks up and they um, they get hit by the up B, uh, and, and that might actually end up messing up your timing. But regardless, the way that you actually take care of this is by delaying your up B. So um, the way to do this is you drop from ledge and you have to delay for at least 10 frames. So I just dropped from the ledge, that's frame one, right? So let's go frame two, three, four, five, six, seven, and let's do eight, nine, 10, 11. So I just did 11 frames. You have to do it by 10. If you do it by nine, the hitbox will still appear. So I did it by 11. And just to prove to you guys, there will be no red hit bubble that appears here. Bam, and we just grabbed the ledge. So again, it requires a delay for you to not have the Fox hitbox active while you're doing the up B stall, which is another reason why I prefer doing the, um, the shine, because if I do the shine, I'm sort of naturally delaying myself already. Um, you can't jump out of shine until frame four regardless. So it adds a sort of natural delay, which helps me make it so that my Fox, when I'm in, in tangibly ledge stalling, I don't have any sort of hitbox in the way. Um, but I am burning my double jump every time. So there's a little bit of give and take there. Um, maybe you wanna use the curl back method. Maybe try not to use your double jump. So you're a little bit safer if you get hit out of it. Um, but maybe you wanna make it so that your up B never has hit bubbles, right? So. Uh, you have, with Fox, a couple of different options to go with because of uh, sort of the, the more dynamics that, that Falco has within his up B. And again, Falco doesn't even have hit bubbles on his up B, so there's, there's no real reason um, to actually consider this. I just think you should do whatever is comfortable for you. Um, but make sure you guys are dropping from the ledge frame perfectly before you do this. And yes, if you do the shine before the up B, your stall is still absolutely intangible. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, I get asked a lot about this and I would love to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys later. All right, see ya.